We're talking with John Murs, a prolific writer and author of the Lawson Vampire series. Uh, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Um, you've written four vampire novels. Uh, in fact, you're now preparing for the re-release of the set. Um, why vampires? Why that genre in particular? Well, vampires have always represented sort of uh, the dangerous, seductive quality that I think a lot of people miss in their daily workaday lives. So vampires for a lot of people represent almost a taboo uh, sense of enjoyment, maybe a vicarious uh, lust for life that they can, they can enjoy in the pages of a novel that they might not be able to do in daily life. So for me, it seemed a natural place to go with, with writing the books. All right, you know, from um, the mythology of the vampire dates back, as far as I can tell, to like 6th century BC. And obviously there have been many movies, many books, uh, even songs. Uh, but what intrigues us so much about vampires that the legend continues? Oh, I think it's, it's got to be that the fact that it's, it's always evolving. I mean, you've always got people spinning a new twist on, on where vampires come from, you know, what they're able to do. Since vampires are spread across as many cultures as we have on the planet, I mean, from Japan, you've got uh, this thing called a kappa swap vampire that's got a bowl of sake in his head that he sort of traipses around in the marshes with to, you know, the more traditional Transylvanian vampire. Vampires really sort of represented, I think, historically, you know, this idea of, of a person with an amazing amount of power. And, you know, the variations that, that are on the legends themselves are so numerous and interesting that I, I think a lot of people just are just naturally drawn to them because they represent such a wide variety of entertainment. It's clear that, that we like the experience of being scared, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, why do you think that is? Oh, well, given today's world, I think, it's, I think it's really important for people to be able to be scared in what they would consider a controlled environment. When you have a book that scares you, you know at the end of the day you can put that book down. The scare goes away. The horror that might be contained in that book is controllable by the reader given everything that's going on in the world where we don't have the control over the over the real life horrors that exist i think it's almost a security blanket for people to be able to pick up a book knowing they're going to be scared but then also knowing that they've got the control the power to put that book back down and say enough's enough well, that's interesting but why why the desire to be scared well i think it's a sort of dates back to uh, maybe a primal instinct that we have that maybe is carried over from when our ancestors used to have to run around and, and throw spears at, at animals that were bigger than, than they were. Uh, fear is something that's always been in us. It's a survival instinct. I think uh, mankind without a sense of fear is not mankind anymore. Uh, if you lose that survival instinct, then certainly in centuries since that time, that survival instinct has been dulled significantly. But if you talk to a police officer that's been on the job for years and years. If you talk to a soldier who's been in combat, they'll often talk about, uh, you know, I was coming around the corner and I don't know why, I just stopped. And before I knew it, you know, if I'd taken another step, bomb would have gone off, I would have been shot or something. So it's still there, but it's, it's been dulled so much over the centuries. I think that, that people need to, to sort of search that scare out in other forms to sort of reconnect with, with who they might have been at another time. Now, you personally, you've written some frightening scenes in your books. Um, what is it that scares John Murs? Oh, I always tell the story about the, the first nightmare I can ever remember having was uh, The Count from Sesame Street, which I, I guess would naturally tie into the fact that I write about vampires now. But I was, uh, I couldn't have been much older than two years old, and I was sick, and I had a terrible fever. and. The nightmare of the Count just for some reason has always, always stuck with me. I've made peace with him now, but, uh, <laughs> but at the time, he scared uh, the living bejesus out of me. I think uh, nowadays the thing that scares me the most is the thought of something happening to my children. Um, when you become a father, or as any parent would, would know, uh, fear takes on a different meaning. You know, when you're younger, you have a sense of invulnerability to a certain extent, you know, you're, you're young, you can go out, you can do all this kind of crazy stuff, and you like to tempt the fates, so to speak. But then you get married, 
maybe you have a child and ooh, all of a sudden you've got this precious little thing in your arms and completely defenseless and all of a sudden this realization comes in of oh my god all the crazy stuff that I used to do you know this poor thing is going to be looking at it and then you hear all these other stories and uh, yeah that to me is is what real fear is nowadays something happening to either one of my boys let me follow up on that um, I used to be able to watch a horror movie or read a horror book and not be terribly troubled by it but then the birth of my daughter she came along and all of a sudden it, it was it was too real for me yeah uh, so how has how has your how, how has the birth of your two children affected the content of your writing well I think in some ways, it, it's good for me because I'm able to maybe get my fears out on the page as opposed to keeping them locked inside me where they can fester and, and become more like personal demons that I would eventually have to overcome. I, if I can get that stuff out onto the page, it actually makes me feel better. If I can address some of the issues that scare me, uh, child predators, for example, um, something that, that, you know, pretty much enrages me when I hear about somebody that's going to rob a child of their innocence. I mean, nowadays, we think back to when I, was, when I was younger, and I was talking to some of my friends the other day about this. Summertime, Saturday, any day of the week, I'd say goodbye to my parents, 8 o'clock in the morning, they wouldn't see me until 10 o'clock at night. You can't do that nowadays. You know, it's, it's, a different, it's a different time. Innocence is robbed so soon anyway from a child when you have to sit them down and explain to them that, there are people in this world that aren't necessarily good, you know, that, that are looking to possibly hurt them. And uh, so for me, if I can address that in my fiction or, or some of my other writing, then it's, it's good. It helps me out a great deal, I think. Yeah. Have you ever had a, uh, a, a supernatural style experience you can't explain? Uh, plenty, actually. Um, in high school, uh, a group of uh, guys and myself were uh, forever sort of uh, entranced by the supernatural. We used to watch horror movies all the time. and I remember somebody dragged a Ouija board out at one, one Halloween night, and we were going to sit there, and we were going to try to do it, and we were all laughing about it. We were, didn't take it seriously at all. We had all the lights out, and uh, we had a clock radio for light, so the little LCD unit was giving off light on the Ouija board, and uh, we thought we'd contacted something, and we're sort of all still chuckling about it and ha ha ha, you know. And somebody asked a question and uh, the question was, you know, if you're here, prove that you're here. And all of a sudden the clock radio went off. The buzzer had actually gone off. Now what was weird about it was it wasn't set to go off, it was turned off. And if it had been set for the alarm, the alarm was supposed to play the radio. So the fact that it was the buzzer really freaked us out and, you know, four grown guys running and falling ass over tea kettle to get out of the, the front of the house and uh, outside where uh, I had to stand around and recollect our machismo there for a good five minutes or so before we could get back into the house. But uh, yeah, some, some, some crazy stuff. Yeah, a couple, of, uh, a couple of times I thought I saw some of, some of my deceased relatives when I used to live at, uh, at the house my ancestors built when we lived in Jamaica Plains. So that was uh, interesting, sort of flashes of movement out of the corner of the eye. But, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's nice. I think it's good because it lets you know that uh, what we see in front of us isn't all there is, you know. And I think as as disconcerting as that can be, I think it's also comforting. So, you know, throughout uh, history, there have been some uh, classic horror writers. Of course, Edgar Allan Poe, yes, uh, Bram Stoker, uh, Mary Shelley. And if you think about it, their works are considered literature today. They'd be on the same rack with some uh, Hemingway and some other stuff. Definitely.